Assalamualaikum. Uh, my name is Nizamuddin Wan Yusof, the moderator for today's webinar. I am from the Assistant Vice Chancellor Office, Industry and Community Network, University Technical Malaysia Melaka. Uh, for your information, this webinar series is under the Knowledge Transfer Program, KTP. It is one of the Ministry of Higher Education method to transfer knowledge from the university to the industry. Q&A session will be held after the presentation. At the end of this webinar, the audience will receive a link to the feedback form. The audience who fill out the form will receive a digital certificate of participation and those from UTEM will be given CPD point. Our topic today is the value of personalized product design and users adoption of additive manufacturing 3D printing and will be delivered by technologist Dr. Shahibuddin Ikhwan bin Abdul Kudus. Shahibuddin Ikhwan bin Abdul Kudus received his bachelor degree in industrial design from University Technology Malaysia in 2002 and the master degree in design innovation product design from the Montfort University United Kingdom in 2003. In 2018, he received his doctoral degree in design for digital fabrication from Loughborough University United Kingdom. He started his career at the University Technical Malaysia Melaka in 2006 as a teaching engineer in the Department of Design and Innovation Faculty of Mechanical Engineering. He is Engineering Technology. Uh, he is currently a Deputy Dean, Student Development in the Faculty of Mechanical and Manufacturing Engineering Technology. His research interests include industrial design, consumer design, additive manufacturing and product design and development. He is a certified professional technologist from the Malaysia Board of Technologies. Without further ado, I would like to invite technologist Dr. Shahibuddin Ikhwan bin Abdul Kudus to deliver his speech. Dr. Uh, the floor is yours. Yeah. Uh, okay, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairperson, Dr. Nizamuddin uh, bin Omar Yusuf, uh, my colleague uh, from FKM. Uh, well, hello everyone. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala ashrafil anbihai wal mursalin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Rabbi shrahli sadri wa yassirli amri wa ahlul uqdatan min lisani yafqahu qawli. Allahumma salli ala sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala ali sayyidina Muhammad. Um, first of all, uh, I would like uh, to thank the organizers uh, of this meeting for inviting me here today. So providing, pro providing opportunity for me uh, basically um, to share uh, a knowledge, basically uh, yeah, to, to share knowledge uh, with uh, everyone here. And I also would like to welcome uh, to everyone to my presentation. And uh, thank you all for coming here today. Well, uh, let me introduce myself. Yeah, my name is uh, Shahi Budil Ikhwan. Uh, probably my long is quite uh, my name is quite long, and you can call me Budil for short. Um, I'm uh, formerly in uh, from uh, FKM, uh, but in recent last uh, last uh, th four years, I was transferred to FTKMP. And um, it is a uh, new opportunity to be in the new faculty, okay, um, to, further, to further my research uh, opportunity here. And then this is the, 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 the outcome of the, of, of the research that I have uh, done uh, before. Um, so the, the topic uh, of my presentation today is the value of personalized product design. Uh, which is focusing on end users' adoption of uh, additive manufacturing, or we can see it as a uh, 3D printing. Um, okay, next slide. How to go to next slide? <laughs> All right. So this is me. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I didn't yeah. see your slide actually. You didn't see my slide. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So I think Maybe you need to reshare. Reshare, yeah. So what do you saw just now? Just empty, empty screen. Yes, now empty screen. Okay, empty screen. Okay. Uh, wait a minute. Can you see it now? Yes. Okay. Good. Good. Yep. 
Okay, we may proceed. So this is me. Um, I'm basically an Arsenal fan. Um, and I like uh, drawing stuff. Okay, and that is why I choose industrial design as, uh, as my career. Um, I also would like to travel a lot. Okay, but uh, last time, uh, uh, during my time in the Europe, I like to travel many, many places, uh, beautiful places. Okay. Um, so uh, we can break this area down into the following fields. First is the overview of digital fabrication and additive manufacturing. And then we, uh, we will move on to the end users adoption of uh, 3D printing. And then we will talk about uh, product personalization. And then uh, we will move on to the adding value to the personalized product uh, through additive manufacturing. And then uh, finally, we will talk about the role uh, of designers and engineers. Okay. Uh, I don't know, the audience here, I don't know, uh, it's around uh, 15 audience uh, on, online at the moment. So probably, uh, how many of you ever use uh, 3D printer? So if you can uh, provide some uh, information from from the from the uh, audience how many of you have ever used uh, 3d printer is there anyone and then uh, how many of you ever design your own product and then fabricate it using 3d printer anyone Probably Dr. Nizambidin, can you can you look at uh, can you please look at the chat? Uh, because I can't see the chat here. If uh, there is any uh, feedback from the so audience. So far there is no feedback. No feedback, okay. Maybe so, later. Maybe maybe later. later. Yeah, question. okay. Yeah. Okay. So uh, uh, why I am asking this question? Because uh, if you uh, if you have or or if you never use 3D printing or you never design product, uh, this lecture, this uh, sharing session is very good for you, of course, uh, because uh, if you ever tried, okay, uh, designing product and then fabricate it uh, on your own, well, this is probably a new thing for you, okay. All right, so we move on to the next slides. Um, Okay, uh, I would like you to show you some pictures that I originally um, uh, took uh, uh, in in when I was in uh, Leuven, Belgium, uh, during my visit to Materialize. Uh, Materialize is a, is a huge uh, company uh, that providing three uh, D printing services, and they also have a ginormous three uh, D printing machine. Okay, uh, not just uh, the desktop, but uh, the industrial one, industrial machine. So they can print uh, almost everything, okay? From huge, uh, large product until small, small product and until uh, intricate product like here, picture you see that you see here. So this is uh, a lampshade. Okay, uh, many, many kinds, uh, many, many designs of lampshade. Okay, uh, probably you you only know 3D printing is only for uh, producing uh, mechanical parts, uh, probably uh, an aeroplane parts. But actually, uh, 3D printing can, can uh, we, uh, you can use 3D printing for many, many kinds of design, many, 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 uh, kinds of uh, purposes, not, not only for mechanical parts, okay, or, in, or engineering components. It's all, it also can be used for consumer products. It also can be used uh, to print out um, uh, jewelry, okay, or personal stuff. And uh, this is some of the examples that uh, I show you here. So this is also a lamp shade, uh, which is uh, you can open and close uh, the shades. And uh, the amazing, the, 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 uh, what, what amazed me about these uh, lamp shades is uh, the, the, the joints. 
okay they pin out the joints all together you 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 no need any it, it no need any assemblies so you uh, the the shades the the lamp shades uh, have been printed out uh, all at once together okay you can you can uh, play around with the with the with the link with the linkages uh, on the on the sheets and then uh, this is very intricate uh, lamp shades as well a very nice pattern uh, on the surface and very curvy curvy type of uh, lamp sheets okay and then uh, and this is the this is a, a vehicle dashboard which is uh, have been printed all at once uh, no assembly required okay uh, so this uh, vehicle dashboard uh, have been printed using uh, if i'm not mistaken uh, using a laser sintering uh, as we may know, maybe some of you may know, laser sintering is a huge machine, and uh, probably uh, in the in the lab that we have at the moment in FTKMP, the 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 printed the printed platform is around two hundred by two hundred uh, uh, and two hundred two hundred and two hundred. So you can imagine this company have large and huge uh, built platform of laser sintering. Okay, so they print all this dashboard uh, at once. Okay, uh, no assembly required. So you can imagine how huge the machine is. And then uh, this also, uh, this is a, a chair. Okay, uh, also been printed. Uh, uh, at once okay you don't need assembly so you can see all the linkages uh join jointed together and uh also this one okay this one uh, is not uh been printed uh, using 3d printing uh, some of the parts uh, in the in the in the car have been printed using 3d printing have been fabric fabricated uh, using 3d printing for example like a hose like a like the bracket uh, of the car and so on and so forth and then uh, this one uh, is a it's a high heel shoes for ladies okay uh, on the on the left side on the right side is the uh, 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 prosthetic leg okay for amputees uh, the interesting thing uh, with the shoes is that uh, the shoes has been designed by uh, bio uh, bioengineering engineers. Okay, it's, it's not designed by by designer. Uh, I, I've met the designer, uh, a, a lady basically, a, a lady, young lady, at the time. Uh, she was a scientist basically. Uh, in uh, her area is, is is bioengineering something like that. And she's interested in, in 3D printing. So uh, what she did is uh, she got an idea uh, to design stuff, okay, to design interesting stuff uh, in particular. And then she found that 3D printing is the, is the most suitable way uh, to fabricate or to produce those kind of intricate designs. So uh, she, she looked for a designer, uh, and then uh, she asked a designer to to design this uh, this idea, and then from there she uh, straight away uh, uh, fabricate the design, and this is the outcome of the design. Uh, very sophisticated designs, and 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 uh, I think uh, yeah, this is a very interesting design as well. You you never seen this uh, design anywhere. Uh, uh, this is just to say that uh, 3D print, you, you can fabricate uh, almost uh, everything, uh, anything uh, using 3D printing. And also, uh, if, you, if you can see the picture in the middle, uh, very detailed. Uh, all of this has been printed using 3D printing with colors as well. Okay. Uh, except for the for the left pictures, uh, they use a, they, uh, they use a secondary process um, uh, uh, for finishing. 
but the 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 picture in the middle is is a is a color uh, printing uh, as i think uh, it, it use um material jetting if i if i'm not mistaken material jetting uh, for for the for the parts so you can have uh, several colors okay in one uh, set of uh, product okay so I think that's it. Uh, the the outcome of the ed uh, additive manufacturing is very interesting, which is uh, uh, you can rarely see it. Okay, probably uh, most of us here only saw 3D printing uh, through prototypes of of mechanical parts. But actually, uh, 3D printings uh, can be applied in many many areas that probably you never came across before in your mind. Well, uh, first of all, you have to understand uh, the first thing before you understand additive manufacturing, you need to understand what is digital fabrication. We, we, we talk a, a lot about um, digitalization, digitization, digitalization and sort of stuff. Uh, well, we also need to know what is digital fabrication, okay? So digital fabrication is basically a democratization of invention, which allows uh, individuals to design and produce tangible object on demand, which is uh, uh, you can design it by yourself and then uh, and, and you can uh, fabricate it uh, anywhere, anytime. Okay, uh, based on what, based on your needs, uh, basically based on your needs. Uh, what you need to have uh, is, a, is a 3D modeling software or computer edit design software and also uh, additive manufacturing uh, systems. Okay, so you need uh, two, two stuff, two things. Uh, they are uh, 3D modeling software and also uh, additive manufacturing machines uh, uh, to to produce a digital product, okay, digital uh, digital uh, product through additive. So, um, uh, digital fabrication is a digital modeling and fabrication, which is a process that joins design uh, with production uh, through the use of 3D modeling software or computer added design and additive manufacturing process. Okay, these tools uh, allow designers to digitally design and produce material. Okay, produce uh, fancy fancy material as well. All right, uh, so what technology that allow digital fabrication? So at the moment, uh, the only technology that allow digital fabrication is uh, additive manufacturing uh, through 3D printing and also 4D printing. And in the near future, we will have 5D printing as well. Okay, uh, and uh, what is additive manufacturing? So additive manufacturing uh, is... Uh, one of uh, the manufacturing techniques. Uh, usually, uh, we know. Usually, we know about uh, formative manufacturing, subtractive manufacturing, and the other one is additive manufacturing. Okay, so additive manufacturing uh, is basically is an umbrella term which encompassing a range of technologies that utilize layer manufacturing to fabricate items. Okay. Uh, through 3D computer model, and then uh, you converted it into a code containing instructions for the machine to build the objects. Okay, so the process of editing additive manufacturing is uh, joining materials to make parts from 3D model data, layer upon layer, as opposed to subtractive and formative manufacturing. Uh, just to give you some idea what additive manufacturing is all about, uh, probably you can watch this. Uh, I don't know. Can you see the video? Dr. Nizamuddin, can you see the video? Yes, we can see the video. Yes. This video has yes. any yes. sound? Uh, no, no. This, this video has no sound. Just okay. uh, want to show you. Okay. So basically, this is additive manufacturing. Uh, you build the object uh, layer by layer. Uh, okay, for you, for those of you who don't have any idea about it, okay, so uh, it's very simple, okay. 
Okay, uh, we go back to the, we come back to the slides. Uh, can you see my slides again? Yeah, we can see. Okay, right, so this is another video. Okay, so this is uh, basically a desktop uh, uh, machine. We call it a fuse deposition modeling. Uh, basically, this fuse deposition modeling uh, using material extrusion technology. Okay, uh, so basically, it uses um, a solid filament uh, to produce object. Okay. All right. So I think that's it. That's that's uh, all about additive manufacturing. Uh, just to give you some idea. Uh, and one question is uh, always arise when we talk about uh, additive manufacturing is that is medit additive manufacturing is the same as uh, 3D printing? Okay, the answer is no. Okay, why? Because uh, additive manufacturing is typically associated with production technologies and supply chains. And also uh, 3D printing, on the other hand, is typically associated with the people printing at home or in a community. But both uh, of them uh, produce parts by the addition of layers. Okay, so when we when we say additive manufacturing, it is basically a technologies, okay, a, tech, a, a group of uh, production technologies. Okay, basically uh, we have seven type of additive manufacturing technology. Okay, uh, the, the most uh, famous one is the material extrusion and then uh, uh, VAT photopolymerization okay, and then uh, powder bed fusion and, and, and there are uh, uh, another four. Okay, but uh, these three is, is very famous. Okay, the material extrusion uh, is always associated with the uh, fuse deposition modeling machine, the, the, the filament one that you always uh, see uh, on the uh, on the table in the lab. Okay, so probably you can buy it uh, in Shopee as well. So that is uh, the uh, the 3D printers. Okay, that you always use at home. Okay, uh, but the the FDM uh, using uh, metal extrusion technology. So that's it. So uh, overall, additive manufacturing is not the same as reprinting. Additive manufacturing uh, is uh, referred as the technology itself, and 3D printing uh, usually is usually associated with the with the machine that you you use to print at home, or probably in the lab, or probably in the office, and and has been used by the community. Uh, uh, okay, so. Uh, so that's it, uh, the difference eh, between additive manufacturing and 3D printing. So what is the application of uh, additive manufacturing, basically? Uh, so basically, the, we use uh, 3D printing or additive manufacturing for prototypes uh, to produce uh, casting patterns, uh, tool cavities, as well as uh, direct parts. Okay, so this is the example of uh, prototypes. Uh, and then uh, prototype for fit and function models, and then uh, presentation and marketing models, and also uh, casting patterns uh, that we always use uh, in rapid casting, and then uh, tool cavities, and direct parts. Okay, for example, this part has been used by Boeing, uh, metal printing. Uh, they print these parts directly uh, from the machine and then directly use it uh, uh, on the on the assemblies. Uh, okay, they use the parts directly from the machine. Okay, and then the the other question is why additive manufacturing becoming so important to manufacturers and consumers? Okay. Uh, First thing is the core driver of additive manufacturing is firstly it increased the geometric freedom, which is uh, you can put, come up with uh, many many kind of shapes. Eh? So uh, directly it can increase uh, shape complexity. As you can see in the picture, uh, this picture, uh, you can get a very uh, intricate uh, design uh, of the part. Okay. Uh, 
Uh, you can produce a lightweight parts as well with uh, using strong uh, materials. Okay, if you can see here as well. Okay, uh, the boots. Okay, you can see the, uh, the design of the boots. You can get a very complex shape. Okay, so that is the the first uh, core driver of, of additive manufacturing, which is uh, increased geometric freedom. Secondly, you can get uh, multiple materials okay, uh, from additive manufacturing. It enables manufacturing of complex material composition and design. You can see in the boots here, the football shoes here, you can see a variety of colors. Uh, okay, So these shoes has been fabricated uh, using uh, additive manufacturing machine. Uh, okay, no need assemblies. Okay, uh, no need coloring as well. Okay, it come out like this uh, from the machine. And then next is the functional complexity. Uh, we can embed uh, components and kinematic joints together, all together. Okay, no need assemblies. Okay, uh, just straight uh, out from the machine. And then of course the benefits. Uh, there are several benefits of using this technology. First, uh, economic low volume production where you can produce uh, a batch size as little as one. Okay, you no need to uh, produce a mass production. Okay, uh, if you want, uh, if you want a replacement component, for example, you don't need. Uh, in, in probably in uh, formative manufacturing, you need to design a mold. Then you need to inject the plastic. Uh, the plus, uh, uh, you, you, you need to use uh, injection molding and then you need to in inject the material. Uh, probably uh, you need to produce probably thousands of parts. And then, uh, well, you need to invest on the, on the uh, mold. Uh, okay. uh, but uh, in uh, additive manufacturing, you don't need a uh, mold. You don't, need a you don't need any tools. Okay. What you need is a machine, and then uh, you need uh, uh, 3D modeling software. You design it by your own, and then you can produce it, okay, as little as one, okay? And then improvise environmental sustainability, for example, uh, natural fiber-based filament, okay? New supply chains and retail models, and then uh, you can increase part functionality and aesthetics, as you can see in the picture earlier. And... I think the the most important is product personalization, where you can personalize your own product. Okay, this is what the topic that we're going to talk uh, this uh, afternoon: product personalization. Okay, and then uh, why is AM becoming uh, again? Okay, why uh, AM becoming so important to manufacturing consumers? This is the uh, first thing: is uh, geometric freedom. Okay, you can get very very detailed. Uh, parts, okay, very intricate parts, very delicate, okay. Uh, it is impossible for injection molding to produce this, okay. Uh, uh, this one as well, you can get uh, many, many colors, uh, combination of colors as well. And then, yeah, like uh, the picture on the right is a, is a clothes, okay, uh, full clothes. And then, um, okay, multi-materials, okay, like, like the shoes over here. And then functional complexity, like uh, an assembly of engine. You don't need assembly, just print it, up, print it out altogether, okay? Uh, you just assemble it uh, in the 3D modeling software and then just print it out. Okay, functional complexity, uh, and like this one as well. Okay, and uh, at the moment, the area uh, uh, the area being exploited, uh, such as uh, aerospace, automotive, consumer products, architecture, medical and dental, jewelry, design arts, uh, foundries, and prototype services. Okay, uh, this is the sector application of uh, additive manufacturing, uh, uh, additive manufacturing technology at the moment. Okay, uh, the largest sector is uh, motor vehicles. Okay, followed by uh, sorry aerospace. Uh, sorry, uh, industrial and business machines. 
and then uh, followed by aerospace, and then motor vehicles, and then consumer products and electronics. Okay, so um, and then um, uh, yeah, this is uh, another sector of application such as uh, functional prototypes, uh, cosmetic models, uh, polymer patterns and mold molds, eh? uh, jig fixtures, and as well as uh, end use parts. All right, uh, we're moving on. We have to know the advantage of uh, additive manufacturing as well in comparison to other manufacturing technologies. Okay. Uh, so basically, the, the advantage of additive manufacturing, you no need for costly tools, molds, or punches. And it also has uh, no scrap, uh, no milling, uh, no sending requirements. And also, uh, the machine is uh, automated manufacturing. Okay, uh, the, the material uh, has an ability to be recycled. Yeah, okay. And then uh, the ability to easily share designs and uh, outsource manufacturing, which is um, uh, you can design your own design and then you can transfer it uh, to the manufacturer. Okay, probably uh, via clouds. Okay, and uh, it was speed and ease of designing and modifying products, uh, whereby uh, if you have any changes on the design, you can quickly change the design and then you can quickly print it. Print it out. Okay, you no need uh, to to have a, a mold or tool uh, to produce the, the the parts. Okay, so a, a little bit of uh, limitation at the moment. So uh, it will take a high cost uh, for large production runs relative to injection molding and other technologies. Uh, uh, it also have. Uh, just have several choice of materials, colors, and surface finishes. And then uh, it also have lower precision relative to other technologies, uh, such as uh, injection molding, and also uh, a limited strength, resistance to heat and moisture, and as well as uh, color stability. So uh, if you want a high strength uh, parts, uh, I would like. I would advise don't use uh, 3D printing okay, if you require uh, high strength parts. Okay, don't use 3D printing. You may use uh, other kind of uh, manufacturing technology. Okay, uh, so uh, the only machines that can use can, that that can uh, provide uh, high strength uh, parts at the moment is only uh, powder bed fusion technology uh, through laser sintering. Okay, uh, others, uh, other, other machines uh, is, is not uh, good uh, at uh, producing uh, high strength part. Okay, so uh, we, we, we come back to the business, okay, in users adoption of uh, additive manufacturing or 3D printing. So the promise of 3D printing is based on custom products that are made to order. Uh, such as uh, dental and medical devices, or probably uh, low turnover replacement parts. Uh, probably you want to replace uh, parts. Uh, for example, uh, I'm a toy collector, so I, I collect uh, many, many Transformers toys. So I have uh, a lot of Transformers toys at home. So uh, when I handle the, you know, Transformers, you can change, okay? You can uh, interchange the, the toys from vehicles to robots then robots to vehicle again. And then uh, some of the parts is very, is, you know, uh, it's very tight. And somehow when you are transforming it, uh, you will break the parts, okay? Uh, so probably you also have Gundam toys at home, okay? Uh, so the same thing, you change, change, and then you, you uh, disassemble it, you assemble it, and then the part uh, will break somehow, okay? So I use 3D printing. Uh, to replace the broken parts, okay? I design the parts, okay? Uh, and then uh, produce it, uh, fabricate it uh, using a uh, FDM machine. And then uh, you, you have to color it, okay? And then you, you replace the broken parts, okay? So that is custom products, okay? Uh, that uh, are made to order, depend on, on your needs, okay? 
A major advantage of 3D printing uh, is the separation of product design from manufacturing capabilities. Okay, uh, it, 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 it is mean that um, you can design anything, almost anything, uh, almost uh, any shapes that you want. Okay, uh, so and then uh, as the CAD models are designed digitally, the users can download a CAD design and easily as downloading digital music, then pin the part on a 3D printer. Okay, uh, the thing is, when you design the part, you can uh, upload it uh, uh, in the cloud, and then uh, probably you can use, uh, you can download the model, and then you can print it uh, on your on your printer. Okay, probably uh, some of you may heard or maybe not. Okay, uh, a, a community hub uh, called Shapeways or Tingibles. Okay. In that uh, community hub, uh, people can uh, upload their design, any kind of design, um, mechanical, mechanical design, uh, jewelry, household stuff, anything, almost everything. Okay, they upload it, and then you can download it for free. Okay, uh, but if you want to give tips to the designer, you can do you can do it as well. Okay, for example, this is the Tingivers. Okay, you can have uh, many, many kind of, uh, I think, uh, hundreds of thousands uh, designs. You can get it for free. Okay, you download it, and then uh, you can print it. Okay, and probably, uh, uh, but unfortunately, you, you cannot uh, modify it. Uh, but you can uh, get the dimensions, and then probably you can copy the design, no problems. Okay, and then this one is a uh, shape waste. Uh, it's, it's kind of a community hub as well. Uh, so the designers uh, upload the design and then you can download it. Okay. Um, uh, probably you can you can find it on the internet. It, it, it's free. Okay, it's free. No problem. No, no. I think uh, it, it's a it's a open license. Okay, no problem. You can you can get it, and, and you can print it. Okay, and another, and another one is uh, I materialize. Okay, I materialize also provide uh, a, a, a same uh, web hosting like this, a community hub, uh, whereby the this one I think is professional designer uh, upload their design, but this one I think you need to buy uh, from the website in order for you to get the design. Okay, but the design is very very high quality. Okay. Hmm. All right, and then individuals uh, may experience that realizing a design idea is often difficult. Yeah, uh, because uh, most uh, end users, uh, particularly uh, non-designers background or probably non-engineer, non-non -non engineering background, uh, they lack the skills to design and fabricate their own design. Well. Uh, in past in past years, I I, I always uh, uh, speak with uh, with uh, people who don't have any idea uh, what design is all about, but they are they have uh, but they are in, interested in using two D printing. So uh, my advice is, uh, you need you definitely need uh, design toolkits, okay, uh, which is uh, design software. Okay, so the, ad the adoption of fabrication tools such as 3D printers and easy to use design toolkits may lower the barriers to create physical representation from an idea. So, uh, so for non-expert users, you, if you want to uh, adapt additive manufacturing or 3D printing technologies, uh, it requires you some degree of learning 3D design skills. So this is uh, compulsory. And then uh, you need to learn about uh, additive manufacturing technology, uh, including the materials, the design for additive manufacturing, and also the fabrication process. Well, uh, to be honest, uh, if I if if uh, if uh, I were to to tell you, uh, last time I also don't have any idea what 3D printing is all about, what is additive manufacturing is all about. Uh, I think it is a very complicated uh, technology. 
But actually, when you know, when you learn the skills, you, when you learn the 3D design skills, and then you learn about the technology, uh, 3D printing is not a complicated product. It's not a te complicated uh, technology. It is very easy to learn. Uh, you can uh, e even you can uh, understand or e even you can learn this technology through YouTube. Okay, uh, you can learn the materials uh, it used and then how to design parts uh, for 3D printing. Uh, you can uh, get it easily uh, online. Okay, so there is no barrier basically. There is no yeah no obstacles uh, to learn the, the technology as well as the fabrication process. Okay, so if you want to find uh, a machine, a 3D printing machine, it is affordable now. You can you can get it from Shopee for around 500, 600 ringgit. Okay, uh, compared to the compared to last uh, three, four, five years, it probably over thousands, two thousand, two thousands uh, of ringgit. So now it is uh, uh, is affordable, crazily affordable. Okay. Uh, what you need to have is some degree of learning to these design skills, and that's it. I think that's a difficult thing you need to do is to learn uh, 3D design skills. And then uh, the solution for this is uh, uh, I would like to suggest that uh, researchers uh, create an easy to use uh, AM enabled software platforms uh, so that the non expert and users can easily model. A 3D object in a virtual way. So you you have to we have we have as a research, uh, as a researcher we have to understand that uh, actually there are demands uh, uh, on uh, software platforms that enable uh, non-expert users uh, to create uh, designs. Okay. Um, uh, last time uh, I saw my clicks, uh, they are developing a software just to. Um, manipulate uh, lamp shades design. That's it. Okay, they can play around with the with the design of the, with the shape of the shades. Okay, uh, the overall dimensions, the you know, and then the pattern on the shades. Okay, so they can play. They can play around. Okay, probably we can say customize the lamp shades. Okay, uh, in in uh, other software. Uh, uh, they use geometry shapes and combine it together to to create a form. Okay, it's not an engineering software that 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 we always use like SolidWorks, like Katia. Okay, uh, those kind of software uh, is very easy to use. Uh, and then the 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 aim is that uh, uh the software uh one not expert users. Uh, produce uh, creating their designs and then produce it uh, using 3D printing. So uh, we want a simple, easy to use functions and interface so that uh, end users can create an, an awesome products. Uh, a so-called computer added consumer design uh, need to be developed uh, basically. And then uh, there are several types of uh, 3D print, uh, 3D modeling tools. Okay, uh, at user level, non non expert user level. Okay, uh, you can see here uh, the beginner software. You can uh, okay, you can use uh, one two three D design, one two three D sculpt, three uh, D slash, Tinkercad, uh, SketchUp, or even AutoCAD. Okay, those licenses are basically free. You can uh, get it uh, uh, from uh, from the manufacturer websites, uh, and then some of the platform are web-based application uh, such as uh, One Two Three D Design. You, you just go to One Two Three D Design website auto, from Autodesk, and then you can design your parts straight away from from the web, or if you want. Uh, a hardware base where you download the software and then you install it on your machines, on your computers. Uh, you can download SketchUp, you can download AutoCAD um, for free, okay? And then uh, you can design it uh, by your own. Uh, the thing is like uh, one, two, three D design, one, two, three D sculpt, three uh, D slash, Tinkercad is very, very easy to use. Even a uh, uh, primary school, 
uh, students can, can use it. Okay, it's, it's, it is very easy. Okay, you just use uh, primitive shapes and then you combine it and then you can get a, a, a wonderful product, a wonderful part. And then you can uh, convert it into STL files and then you can send to the machines uh, for uh, fabrication. Then, um, yeah, this is uh, some of the examples uh, from uh, Tinkercad. Just now you see one, two, three D design. This is uh, Tinkercad. Uh, you can get, uh, as you can see here, you can get uh, a, a primitive shapes. Okay, you can combine it. Uh, you can make anything like a house or probably a bicycle, something like that. Uh, anything, okay. Uh, just pro probably uh, what you want to exper experiment a sh uh, a various shapes, probably. Uh, but you have to remember, this is a beginner software. So probably if you want a higher level, you need to go for higher level softwares. Uh, probably intermediate one, uh, like uh, FreeCAD, uh, SolidWorks, Inventor, Sculptris, Rhino 3D, Blender. Uh, some of the softwares are free. Uh, some of them you need to pay. And uh, it is basically a, a hardware-based application. It's not a website uh, or, or web-based application. And some of them are affordable. Some of them are extremely expensive. So it is up to you. Okay, for example, um, FreeCAD uh, or, or Blender. Blender is free. Okay, the only thing is the you need to familiarize with the interface. As you can see in the picture, uh, it is a, a, a bit complicated. <laughs> okay, for for first timer. Uh, but I also never use Blender. Okay, I always use SolidWorks or probably uh, Rhino 3D to design parts, okay? Uh, but these softwares, uh, those softwares are very interesting, okay? Like stop trees, if you, if you, uh, if you interested in, in uh, uh, minifigures, okay? You can use uh, sculpt trees, okay? Probably blenders. If, if you, if you interested in, 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 in a figure uh, where you want to design a, a character, a, a, probably a game character, yeah, you can use Blender. It is like uh, uh, if you can imagine if you have a clay and then you want to shape the clay with uh, any any object, any, uh, uh, you want to shape the clay uh, into a anime uh, character. Uh, so you can use Blender. It, it is same same uh, same application. The thing is, uh, instead of you use your hand, you use the software. The, you use the software instead. Okay, um, and then uh, if you want higher level, you can go for professional uh, software such as uh, 3D Studio Max, ZBrush, Modo, Maya, or even Katia. Uh, and of course, you need to pay for this. Okay, uh, it is a hardware-based application. Uh, some of the of the software is uh, a bit complicated. Some of them is very easy. Uh, the thing is, what you need is money, okay, to get the software. But uh, if you can get this kind of software, um, I, I will guarantee you can produce a very interesting, uh, a very awesome uh, parts, okay. Uh, whatever you want, you you imagine you can you can uh, draw it in 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 three D, okay, and then you can straight away print it. Okay, and then the outcome surely uh, uh, extremely awesome. Okay. All right, so supported by desktop 3D printers, existence of 3D printing service bureaus and easy to use AM enabled design toolkit. This will present an opportunity for a new paradigm of product real realization which is, uh, we call it as a product personalization, uh, whereby, uh, if you can see in the, in the, the, the flow, in the, in the slides, you can see individual consumer always need designer, okay, to design their product. And then the designer will print 
in the product for yeah. and uh, the designer will send the will or will provide the 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 product to you okay uh, so the new paradigm is where you become a designer okay and the designer become uh, a facilitator for you they just uh, assist you uh, in designing the product okay probably assist you in uh, in in, in uh, using the software or probably assisting you um, uh, using the the printer but uh, you uh, as a consumer you can design uh, your product by yourself and then you can print it out by yourself as well okay through your through uh, your own 3d printer or probably you can send the file to 3d printing service bureaus okay such as uh, materialize such as uh, shapeways okay and you can get uh, the, the the product uh, straight away from the from the uh, from the makers okay proto makers Okay, so the idea here is uh, uh, you as a uh, end users, you also can become a designer, okay, by uh, uh, optimizing or using this kind of tools uh, and system, okay, uh, such as uh, 3D modeling software and also uh, 3D printing machines, okay, uh, so. Uh, Additive manufacturing uh, has directly become an enabler for end users to involve in self-designing uh, their own product. Okay, uh, when we talk about product personalization, I would like to provide a little bit of definition what product personalization is all about. So product personalization is the process of taking a general product design concept and tailoring it uh, to specific needs uh, of individual. Okay, probably by reassemble them to produce a bespoke products that designed to satisfy the requirements of individuals and no others. So uh, uh, what is the meaning here is uh, design of the product, okay? Uh, and also, uh, you can operate as uh, co-designers of, of your own designs. And this will provide an opportunity for you uh, to get a product with unlimited options. Okay, So you can design almost anything, uh, anything you want. Okay, And uh, with, with these uh, tools and system. Uh, okay, So... The, the main purpose uh, of product personalization is uh, to create product that fit uh, to your own personal needs. Okay? For example, um, for example, uh, I would like to have a fancy kind, uh, a fancy design of, of uh, the, the glass frame. Okay, my, my, my glass frame. So I can design a fancy, fancy design. Okay, uh, probably uh, triangle, triangular shapes of uh, glass, okay? And then I, I design it and then I fabricate it and uh, I'm the only one uh, who have those kind of designs. Or probably uh, you want to produce a ring uh, or probably a wedding ring, okay? Uh, a wedding ring you bought from Habib Jewels is so cliche, so you want a very unique shapes of a, a, a wedding ring so you can design your own ring uh, using uh, 3D modeling software, and then you can fabricate it using 3D printing. And finally, you can uh, have a secondary process on it. You want to have a gold plated on the ring, it is up to you, as long as you can get your own personalized design. Okay, so additive manufacturing system and tools enable this. Okay. Uh, so you can get a relevant product attributes uh, for you, uh, okay? And then um, this will facilitate positive experience, okay? Increasing the satisfaction with the product and meet both functional and hedonistic needs, okay? Uh, so uh, product personal personalization is very interesting. I have tried uh, this before uh, when I'm studying about product personalization. I produce so many kind of uh, parts, okay? Uh, and then, uh, like uh, last time, uh, I I designed my own. Uh, sorry, not 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 my own. My wife's uh, bracelet. Okay, and then uh, and then uh, later I asked my wife to 
design her own bracelet, okay, uh, using those kind of softwares, and then I fabricate it for her. So I don't have to buy a bracelet from from the shops, okay? You can design it by your own. Even though it's made from plastic, you know, the sentimental value is very high because uh, she, created, uh, she created it by herself, okay? Uh, and then you provide this opportunity to her. So it saves you some money, okay? So uh, this is a classification of end user's involvement in, in, in designing parts, as you can see in the graph. So the higher the 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 y is the is is uh is the higher involvement uh, consumer involvement in design, and then uh, uh, if you see the x uh, the x uh, path, uh, the further it goes. Uh, it shows that designer acts uh, as a facilitator to allow the consumer to attempt to address uh, uh, users' needs uh, in products design. So, uh, as you can see, conventional design, uh, you can see down there, the designer design for the user, so user have less involvement. As we go further up, okay, the higher degree of control will be given to cons uh, will be given to consumer, and then uh, the 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 farther you go to the right, the lower the degree of control uh, taken by the consumer. So um, so if you go up, okay, a consumer can design uh, their products, and then the designer will reduce their, their functions uh, from, from designer to the facilitator, okay? Probably assisting uh, consumer in designing uh, products, okay? So this is the, this is the, the paradigm of uh, product uh, personalization, okay? For example, here you can see a phone case. You can have your own kind of phone case. Uh, what you need to do is uh, have a correct dimension of your phone, okay? Uh, and then you can have a pattern on, on the phone case, pattern that uh, probably have a sentimental value to you, okay? Or probably uh, a pattern that can portray a unique a uniqueness, okay? Um, anything, anything you want, okay? And then this is the bracelet that I talked about last uh, just now. Okay, this is the example, uh, one of the example. Uh, have a Voronoi pattern on it. Although it's a, although the the bracelet is uh, dark in color, but uh, I think if you wear it, uh, yeah, people people will, will will it will definitely attract people because uh, the design is is very rare. And people will wonder how, how, how you made this kind of bracelet. Okay, this is a, this is a calf. Yeah, okay, this is a, a lampshade. Okay, uh, this lampshade uh, is basically uh, has been is, uh, has been pro produced using uh, an easy to use software. Okay, the software is dedicated just to design. Uh, 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 lampshade where the user able to manipulate the shape and then um, and then apply pattern uh, on the lampshade okay uh, this is not my design so this is uh, the end user the 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 end user's design okay uh, uh, the guy want this kind of shape so he likes the shape and then we we produce for him and then he, uh, he likes it and then he take uh, the, the shape okay and then uh, this is a raspberry pi case uh, you can you can take the dimension of the raspberry pi and then you if then uh, instead of you buy the standard case uh, from shopee probably you can uh, fabricate it by your own and then probably apply the pat uh, patterns, okay? So you can apply Voronoi patterns on it. Uh, and then you can have your name on it as well. 
Yeah, okay. Uh, but however, uh, basically, when you designing your own product, uh, what kind of value you see from it? Okay, the question is how end users see the value of personalized products uh, through additive manufacturing. So, uh, end users may see added value if the product provides a combination of additional attributes uh, to the basic benefits, such as uh, style, durability, quality, symbolism, ease of use, for, uh, and etc. For example, okay, for example, like uh, you buy a Proton X70. So, what value you see from it? Uh, probably the the features, the safety features of it. Probably the design, probably the price. Okay, if you buy a BMW uh, 3 Series, uh, for example, what the values you see from it? Uh, everything. If you buy a watch, uh, 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 an iPhone, probably a phone. What what's the difference between Samsung phone and iPhone, uh, Apple iPhone? So what's the value? You must see a, a value if you want to. Uh, uh, if you want to have a uh, uh, set, if you want to achieve satisfaction uh, by using that product, okay. Uh, value, uh, you can see the value if you uh, appreciate uh, and then use the product as anticipated in consumption activities, okay, to achieve the, your personal values, okay. So basically, uh, uh, it will combine technical features as well as the benefits uh, when consuming the product. Uh, for example, um, the difference between iPhone and uh, probably a Galaxy phone, uh, both of them have good technical features, but the, the benefit of iPhone is where the software is, uh, uh, is, 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 uh, is very interactive and then uh, Apple provi provide uh, a long security patch, okay? Uh, and updates uh, is, uh, compared to the Galaxy phone. So that is where you find the benefits. And uh, when you see the benefit, uh, you, you, are, you have you, uh, uh, you, you know, to choose the iPhone is, is a no-brainer, okay? You, you will invest your money for iPhones because of the benefits, okay? So what are the factors that influence and users perceive value of personalized uh, uh, additive manufacturing products? Okay, so this is the the figure where the you 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 will you will perceive a, a benefit. Okay, uh, you will perceive you have a perceived cost, and then um, I mean uh, you have you will have three uh, uh, perceived uh, item, which is uh, product benefits. Uh, logistic benefits as well as a uh, perceived cost. Okay, you must see the benefit, the product benefit first. Okay, whether it is functional, social, affective, epistemic, hedonic, and so on and, and so forth. And then uh, you you will uh, also consider the cost uh, where you need to purchase or invest on, on the item, uh, which is in in in, the, in this context you need time. Uh, uh, to design, and then you need attention. You need to focus on the on the design on the on the part that you design, and as well as money, where you have to buy uh, software probably, and also uh, the 3D printing machine as well. And then uh, the logistic benefit is uh, the design toolkits, the softwares, and then the printing facilities, or probably the material you want to use. Okay, all of these will contribute to the central factors of product personalization, okay? And then you will, you will uh, have a perceived value on the personalized product, okay? The thing is, uh, if, if you want to uh, have a high product value, uh, you must see the product benefits uh, greater than the cost. So if you, if you for example, if you, if you see uniqueness, uh, by producing a personalized products uh, through 3D printing, if you see uniqueness is is higher, is high in that particular product, uh, you 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 will you won't think twice uh, to invest uh, money on that kind of product. 
Okay, so this is the taxonomy, the value taxonomy of uh, product externalization using uh, additive manufacturing. There are basically two kind of value you will get, uh, which are, which is a uh, product value and the, and the experiential value. So the product value uh, probably um, uh, functional value, unique value, personal expressive value, and sensory value, which is sensory value reflect is the is a reflection on beauty and uh, sensory pleasure uh, of the product. While experiential value, you will get a, a, a co-design value, which is the interaction between you uh, and the product uh, during the self-design activity, as well as hedonic value. Hedonic value is the enjoyment uh, or the pleasure that reflect the entertainment when, when you're designing the product. Okay, you are you are very enjoy eh? enjoy designing the, the product. So you, uh, when you enjoy, you will spend more time. Okay, uh, and interaction uh, with the with the uh, in designing the product. Okay, so uh, a study uh, says that uh, a personalized product uh, through three D printing. Uh, will increase 80% uh, more interest than the standard design. And it also provides 55% uh, more design satisfaction, as well as 72% uh, to be more likely to purchase uh, the product. And then 60% greater perceived quality of design features. Why, why the percentage is so high? Because uh, the product is tailored to you. Okay? The standard product uh, probably uh, satisfy you, but uh, it is not tailored to you. You need to choose. Probably you 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 have to uh, find a, uh, probably if you want to find shoes, you you need to find a a size, okay, a, a right size for you. But if you personalize the product, uh, you can have the the shoes tailored to you, okay, every single aspect. Okay? Uh, uh, from the product, so that is why uh, uh, the the uh, the value is uh, higher when you personalize uh, the the products. And then also you can see here the the core design value and the and also hedonic value is also high because you experience it by yourself. Okay, you do it by yourself. You 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 create by yourself, and then. You, you fabricate the product by yourself. So this will increase the uh, hedonic value you enjoy. And then you co-design the product. Instead of designer uh, design it for you, uh, now you design your own product. So the, the, this will suggest that, this suggests that personalized features uh, designed by end users using AM enabled tools and system able to provide additional unique value and also high experiential value to end users. Okay, so what about uh, designers and engineers? So is, if uh, everything in the world has been designed by consumers, so what, what are the role for designers and engineers? So designers and engineers need to understand uh, the benefits of this technology. And then, uh, and then uh, uh, designers and engineers have to know the fundamental challenge uh, uh, in, unco in uh, uncovering the technological opportunities of uh, additive manufacturing to the fullest. Okay? So, uh, designers and engineers need to increase the knowledge and practical experiences on additive manufacturing. And then they need to change the way of thinking about additive manufacturing. How? By provide, uh, provide uh, opportunity for uh for end users to involve in the design process okay uh, at the moment the design process is conquered by the designers and engineers so why not we we bring the consumer into the design process and we experience it all together okay so this will reduce your probably your responsibility okay in designing the product okay and designers and engineers uh, need to understand and realize that the potential design characteristics that could add value to the product from the end user point of view themselves. Okay, 
so at the moment, uh, in 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 the concurrent design, we ask uh, probably opinion uh, from in user, and then from the opinion uh, we process, and then uh, we design the product based on the opinion. So in this uh, paradigm, we ask the user themselves to design what kind of character they want, okay? Uh, because uh, when they design the product by themselves, they can see the value eh? that, that relevant to them. So what we need to do is to adopt the knowledge, the understanding and experiences into the design process, okay? Uh, probably we need to have an, uh, a framework, okay? Uh, to adopt this uh, knowledge and understanding and, and uh, share the experience, okay? with the user into the, in, in the design process. And also this is uh, the opportunity of uh, entrepreneurship uh, uh, with uh, additive manufacturing. Okay, another question. What is UTEM's role in increasing the value of 3D printing for the local community? Okay. So people ask me about this, okay? So what we do, what we do for, for uh, promoting 3D printing to the community. Okay, what we have here, we have uh, makers at UTEM Community Club. Probably many of you didn't realize uh, about this community club. Okay, makers at UTEM is a 3D printing community club based in FTKMP, uh, which is uh, not just to enhance learning, but also to give UTEM students the opportunity to play, explore, and express their passions in uh, Industrial Revolution 4.0. So, uh, Makers Club, uh, or Makers at UTEM Club, uh, provide varieties of uh, state-of-the-art 3D printing machines and 3D scanning equipment. Uh, so, uh, students uh, from UTEM and as well as students from other universities can come to Makers at UTEM where uh, makers at UTEM provide training, uh, prototype services, workshops uh, in 3D printing, 3D scanning, and 3D modeling as well. Okay, uh, and then uh, this not just limited to higher education students, but also for schools and communities. Okay, so uh, what we have in the makers at UTEM, we have a lab, uh, basically a lab, a studio, we have a computer, a computer, uh, high end computer. We have a, a presentation rooms, okay, and also we have uh, high end machines, okay. If you can see in the picture here, we have Ultimaker 3D printing machines, uh, we have uh, various kind of uh, uh, you know, 3D printers, uh, such as uh, stereo lithography, we have uh, fused deposition modeling, and we also have uh, laser, laser sintering machines, okay? It depends on uh, what kind of product you want, because uh, different purpose of the product uh, will use a different kind of uh, manufacturing process, I, I mean uh, 3D printing process, so it is depend uh, on, on, on what kind of product you want. Okay, so this is the, the, the facilities that uh, makers at UTEM have. And we also have uh, a designer, engineer here that facilitates you. Okay, so, say, so they will provide, uh, they will assist you in uh, how to design parts, okay, how to fabricate parts, okay, uh, handling the machines, how to, um, to do secondary process when after you print uh, the parts, okay. So the engineers will assist you, okay, uh, um, and facilitate uh, the project, okay. Uh, so this will give you opportunity uh, to feel, uh, uh, you know, uh, I mean, uh, to to get the experience, uh, hands-on experience by your own by yourself, okay, not by the designer or by the engineer. You yourself. Uh, 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 get experience. Okay, we also have a 3D scanner. If you need a replacement part and you don't have the the 3D modeling, you don't know how to create the modeling. We can um, uh, scan the product 
And then we can get the 3D modeling data and then you can manipulate the data and then you can print it out. Okay, using a FDM machine or probably a stereolithography machine or even laser sintering machine. Okay, so uh, as for conclusion, uh, to wrap up this presentation today, I think uh, more than one hour already. So what we need to have is, uh, what we need, what we need to know is uh, additive manufacturing basically will evolve. Uh, it will go faster, it will become cheaper, and it will become better. So uh, compared to the last five years, uh, additive manufacturing technology now is better, it's cheaper, uh, very affordable. And, uh, also, the design software also will evolve. Uh, it can it now uh, more accessible and more intuitive. Uh, some of them are web based, some of them are hardware based, some of them cheaper, some of them a bit pricey. It is up to you. Uh, uh, depends on your level, uh, either beginner, intermediate, or professional. And uh, the product that you produce from uh, 3D printing will increase. Okay, uh, the, the I mean the value of the product will increase uh, because uh, end users increase their intelligence. Okay, uh, the more you learn, the more you know. Okay, the higher skills you 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 obtain, the more value that you that you will get. Uh, and then uh, now, 3D printing uh, has become a mainstream technology. People uh, really don't care uh, how things are made, but uh, this is a gradual evolution for me. It's, it's, it's an evolution, uh, not a revolution. So people will slowly understand the technology, particularly in Malaysia, because uh, as I can see, people in US, in Europe, most people already know about this technology, but in Malaysia, what I can see is this technology is still growing slow, uh, steadily, but slowly. Okay, uh, so this is the in this session, this is the this is where uh, I would like to promote this technology and and and, and I encourage uh, more people to involve uh, in to participate uh, in, uh, in in designing parts uh, using this technology. But I didn't sell the 3D printer, so you need to know that. <laughs> you need you need to find the printer uh, elsewhere, okay? Use the, the technology. What I want to sell here is the knowledge, that's it, <laughs> okay? Uh, I encourage you uh, to find the knowledge uh, uh, of 3D printing. So I think uh, that's it uh, for today. Uh, uh, it, uh, so I would like to to uh, Dr. Nizamuddin uh, to handle the, the session for now. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, thank you so much for the really interesting presentation from Dr. Shahi Budil. Uh, like he said just now, if uh, he didn't sell the, any technology, he just sell the knowledge. If you have any question, I think you better directly contact uh, Dr. Shahid Budin or if you don't have the contact detail, you can directly email me and I will uh, connect it to you. This is the QR code for the internet and feedback form, uh, but uh, I already put inside the chat box and I see that a lot of you already uh, fill it uh, the form. So, uh, okay. So for those who are new here, uh, we have uh, two social media platform, which is uh, Facebook, Pejabat Penolong Map Champs and Jaringan Industri and Masyarakat, and also uh, LinkedIn, uh, which is a USB Technical Nation Maka. Uh, basically, if we have any event or any webinar or any program, we will advertise in both of the platform. So I hope uh, everybody can always uh, look at it. And last but not least, every time we have uh, ended our webinar, we will uh, take a photo session for a memo. So I hope everybody can switch on their camera and I will take a photo. Smile. One, two, three. Okay, that's it.
Thank you all for joining our you. webinar. I hope we will you, meet again man. for the next webinar in June and uh, okay. So that's it. Goodbye and Assalamualaikum to all. Bye. Waalaikumsalam.